All the cedar that wasn't useful for planking continues to find other uses in a few more glue-ups. This week, the sides for the hatches and the housetop come into view. bunch of one by one cedar strips that we're going to build up into a box. So we milled and cut the strips over, over length, but exactly to size. And we made these curved bits to fit on the grub and then establish a straight line we want to make sure we stay true and straight so we don't have a wonky box. So Steve made up a box that we can screw to. Keep this as flat as possible to make fairing easier. Initially I glued up pieces just to stick up and establish straight lines, but well, since nothing's straight, those kind of flared out and then we'd have a very funny flared box on the forward hatch that Steve and Robin would get to see every time they went to, to bed. And they go to sleep seeing the funny shaped flared out box. So this is gonna be a spot where uh, one, it would be really nice to sit on the bunk and have headroom and be able to stand up out of the bunk and have headroom. So we want enough height, even if it looks a little bit funny, that there's enough headroom because the hatch being a little tall and looking funny is going to bother me less than me bonking my head. Um, so we're going to end somewhere along this line and probably end up cutting it back a little bit farther. But we're going to strip up taller than we need. Copper nails, essentially as clamps. Uh, also, if for some weird reason the glue joint fails or the fiberglassing over the glue joint fails, it's also all nailed together. So, very much uh, boots and suspenders type construction here. The plans for Akin don't really specify hatches, he just draws hatches and um, the assumption there is they would be traditionally built. So we're strip building the cockpit, the house, and the hatches um, because they're lighter and less likely to leak, basically. So if we were to join these timbers together to be this tall, it's a lot of timber to move, and it's a very tough environment here, soaking in the rain and baking in the sun. It's a lot different than what the hull experience is. And we planked in oak, so we added a lot of weight to the hull. So if we can shave weight between the cockpit, the housetop, and the hatch, which is all up on deck, that will make a pretty big difference. And it makes great use of this less than amazing cedar that we have. So instead of having to have beautiful quarter sawn teak or whatever to be able to do this, we can just basically use cedar offcuts and paint it and it will be probably stronger, definitely lighter. And um, if something happens to the hatch, it's not the most repairable thing, but these structure kind of all stand alone and if something happens to them, they'll, they'll just get replaced. last layer will put us over in the back. Great, let's do it because there's plenty of glue and I've already begun.
and I'm out of ring shank nails. So I'm gonna nail that last one and we'll call it. We'll that's, call it. That's high enough. Cool. You have a lot left. Yep. Can we start gluing up the stern one? Yeah, let's. All right, I'll go grab some more nails. Okay. So what I would say for this one is let's just lay up some layers. We'll get them yep. nailed, and then I think I think we can just kind of clamp one side down and just force the rack out of it and clamp it down in the four corners. Does that make sense? You like when we install it, or no? While like if, we're while it's up. while we glue up. So like we just glue up three or four layers, and then yeah. we'll clamp here, crank and rank over here, yeah. clamp. Because we otherwise we're gonna just be putting clamps on and off and on and off. And yeah. It's gonna be a nightmare. That, it, it was. Yeah. But yeah. we're only doing a couple rows, so I don't think it's yeah. a big deal. And you have all the things, nails, hammer. Yeah. Okay, cool. Do you care where you start? Nope. Okay. There we go. Oh, that was plenty long. I'll put the clamps on. Okay. Because we're pretty racked. It's gonna take a little bit of a little bit of muscle here. Okay. Someone's gonna get gluey. I prepared for it. basically wet out the surface while we're at it. While the hatches kicked off someplace warm, Steve and KP got right to work on the next big glue up, the house top. these cedar strips for the house top but first I put down kind of a mold I covered the whole area with plywood and plastic to really strengthen and give these cedar strips shape now that it's all kicked off and warm in here we'll fare the top flip it over fare the underneath and we'll fit it and fiberglass over it because of the prep being flat, flat, flat. It made the process of gluing up yesterday pretty straightforward. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the no, glue up itself was easy. Yeah. The temperature right now, that's the that's our biggest challenge. I was really yeah. hoping to have this all done by now, but things took a bit longer than, right. you know, as it goes. Um, so the rest of the glue ups we can do inside the house. This we have to do here. So. Hence the tenting and the space heaters and the heater down below, and basically trying to warm this from the bottom and from the top, uh, so that it the kicked off. yeah it'll kick left well last night. We uh, we ran the heaters for 
quite a few hours. And then when I went to bed, I came out and shut everything off and left it tented. And it was warmer in there this morning than it was outside. So it, it held a lot of heat, which was good. Nice. Nice. So this will be the first winter ever that you've had heat. As long as we can get the house top finished and glassed, then we can have heat. Yep. We got to make sure we get, get this done before the weather stops us. Yeah, let's get this sanded. It's starting to stop us. It's starting to stop us.
So we need to flip this over. Okay. And what I think is going to be the easiest way to do it, and I'm totally open to suggestions, is to spin it 90 degrees uh -huh. and then flip it on it, oh, 180 and then spin it back 90 degrees. Good job, team. Well done. <laughs> High five. Okay. <laughs> when well something done. gets taller than me, I'm like, I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> We've got the five foot crew going yeah, over here. That's what it is. <laughs> five foot strong. slightly irregular material, you know, and that you're making a new thing out of something or like multi pieces, right? Like, so I think I think this shows it well, you know, like more so than than even some of the other stuff. Like when, when I see strip link things they're they're often like this at this stage, you know. And it's just really neat to be able to see how like material like this that wouldn't be able to be used for something else can be really strong. <laughs> and yeah. exactly what you need, you know. And what in I mean? this instance, the imperfections don't really matter. Much. Right. Oh no, not at all. Time for clean dragon acetone. Yep. So yesterday, KP and I mixed up some total fare, and we put that on the housetop. It's a tad too much. And just gave the whole housetop a skim coat, and anywhere there was knots or defects, any place we had a glue joint that didn't quite have enough glue in it, we filled that with the fairing compound. Today we flipped it. Thank you, Ann and Robin. And then I got it power planed and sanded. And now we're gonna wet the whole thing out. And basically the fairing compound on the other side creates a dam in any of the gaps or voids. And we're gonna fill them from the other side now. And then we'll put fairing compound later. But this way we make sure that any knot, any place there's a not enough glue in a joint, this should just flow down in there. And we're doing it this way because this will soak right down and fill up any void where the fairing compound or the thickened epoxy, it won't flow like this stuff will. And we want to make sure that we fill up any voids. This is all going to get fairing comp. It's another sand and fairing compound as well. So if it's not excruciatingly perfect, I'm not super worried. All right, Aaron, I need your eagle eyes. Can you see any spots where there's like drips and runs that I should get before I make sanding harder for myself? There's a puddle there, and a puddle there, and a puddle there, and a puddle there. And a puddle there. That's what I'm saying, find me the puddles. Yeah, so, so there's a bunch of puddles there. there. <laughs> what is that? There might be a puddle there, and there's a puddle there. We're going to get that tarp and that tarp and carefully knock the sawdust off them down there without spreading sawdust up here. 
we got to set up a rope and we got to pull the rope across and then put a pair of heaters in there and start to cook it so the epoxy kicks. I mean, it's already starting to kick, but it's cool. A heater? A heater. You could put it over the rope. That's a good idea. Yep. And then have the three, the extension cord with the triple end go, whoa, to it. Yeah, just like one right there. It's hard when you have small things. There we go, perfect. All right, we'll just let that, let that cook for a few hours. Cook. Well, epoxy, as I'm sure you know, is it, it's a chemical reaction that needs heat. So. Sort of like yeast and flour and sugar when you make bread. Kinda. So it really should be let it bake. Let it bake. Yep. Yep. All right. Thanks for watching this week's video. You can support the project by giving this episode a like and by subscribing to the channel. Head over to our Patreon page for access to our live content and more. Next week, more sanding and painting and sanding and painting awaits the housetop. And Keith from Shipwright Skills is back to start work on the main mast. Thanks for following along and we'll see you again next week.